the course of tradition. And uh, for this morning's lecture, I have Claudia Chan uh, presenting the first, uh, first class today on this topic. Uh, Claudia is uh, a graduate from MAC last year. She was in some of my classes and uh, is volunteering to, uh, with me this, uh, this summer. I'm uh, sorry, this, we're in fall, right? Autumn. So uh, she volunteered with me and uh, asked to look at topics related to wastewater treatment and filtration was a topic that uh, I wanted to cover in the 4M course but didn't have the notes together yet. So uh, Claudia pulled all the notes together for me and uh, we created the slides together and she's, and I figured well she did all the work, she might as well present it, right? Give us some practice. Um, so Paul is going to teach the class today on this uh, on this topic. So we're all familiar with the situation you see up here, but we're going to start looking at some of the equations and the derivation of the system. So thank you, Paul. Hi everyone. Thank you. Thank So adding flat 
inoculant to a mixture promotes accumulation of particles. So when we have particles clumping together, you get uh, bigger sized particles and it's actually a good uh, preparation step for our filtration later on. Because when we're filtering out larger particles, it's a little bit easier to retain, right? So, uh, once we add the flocculant, we go into the first filtration step, which in this case, specifically, it's the mercury vacuum uh, drum. And uh, it retains the solids and then allows the filtrate to pass through to the membrane filtration. So in membrane filtration, it's um, a more thorough filtration step where you uh, get to take out all of these small particles that weren't retained in the rotary vacuum. So you'll learn more about that in next week's class. Uh, so after that, uh, it goes into the final steps of production, so adjusting your pH and uh, solidifying it or crystallizing it to uh, finish it off. Okay. Oh, but today, in the, today's class, we're going to really focus on the rotary vacuum uh, filtration step. So if we look at just the rotary drum filter, uh, the type of equipment, to filter your slurry. Uh, so here is the cross section of the rotary drum. Here at the bottom is all of the slurry. So when it's rotating, it has a vacuum in the middle and it's pulling the slurry from the bottom and also drying it at the same time. And the retained solids are on the outer edge of that vacuum drum. So uh, the gray area is where your cake is forming. And as it's rotating, uh, some rotary drums have washers at the top there that uh, wash the cake off so it's easy to remove. So at the end of the cycle, we have a blade there that kind of scrapes off all of the cake. Uh, and then it, uh, you can remove the cake. So um, it's a continuous process. So as you're filtering, it's also removing cake. So it's efficient in the sense that you're saving time, it's a little less labor intensive, and you're saving money in that way. So I have an animation here that uh, will show you how it works. As the drum rotates out of the slurry, the solids start to drop as air passes through them via the vacuum from within the drum. As the drum completes its revolution, the solid surface comes in contact with the scraper blade, which removes the solids that have accumulated. The drum continues rotating back into the slurry. The process starts all over again. Once the device has reached steady state and the drum is fully covered with the solid state for the first time, the filter can operate for hours, taking in slurry and discharging clarified filtrate and dried solids continuously. Okay, so any questions on that? Does that make sense or do you want to see it again? <laughs> Not again? Okay. So going back here. <coughs> so that's uh, one type of filtration equipment. Uh, the next one that we're going to uh, look at is uh, the plate and frame uh, unit operation. So uh, in the industry, it's really, really big. And the slurry is coming from <coughs> the end here. And then the reason why it's called plate and frame is because of this middle section where there's uh, a place and frames alternating. And that's where your filtration uh, takes place. So. The filtrate comes out at the bottom here in the pipes. So if we focus on the plates and frames, it looks like this. So you've got plate, frame, plate, frame. And your filter cloth is actually attached to either side of the plate. And uh, as the slurry is coming in, it's filling up the frame. 
and then being filtered through the plates. And then the plate actually has channels so that uh, it allows the filtrate to flow through. <coughs> so um, the frame gets the cake filled up, and then if you wanted to remove all of the cake, Sorry, what's the cloth made of? The cloth, um, it can be like a mesh or any type of material. Yeah, it just has to be porous. Um, so to remove the cake, you would have to stop the operation <coughs> and move the plate and frame one by one to let the uh, cake fall out. So that's a little more costly because you are losing uh, money with downtime and you need a little more uh, labor to operate this. So here's an animation of plate and frame.
again, that's uh, sort of adjustable. So that's in question two. So again, save that line. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, downtime? Downtime? Yeah. So downtime also, it can relate to the time to wash uh, the cake off, right? So. The time to wash butter. Um, how about something, yeah? Uh, utility and material consumption. Yeah, so utility consumption.
do to the slurry, or what can we look at in the slurry that we can adjust? We've got all of these solids. Um, yes, yes, concentration. Concentration, and what about like individual? Yeah, yeah. So we've got particle diameter.
fibrous material packing really closely together. But then on the other end of the spectrum, we have uh, a high voidage, and that's when you have mostly space. So mostly fluid is passing through. And in those cases, you get regular <coughs> solids where you have like, rocks and sediments where they don't pack as tightly as fibrous material. But if you don't know voidage, a rule of thumb is to use 0.4. <coughs> so that's that. And our equivalent diameter is that last term right there where um, it's the, uh, this term right here. So the S0 is a specific area per unit volume. So that's a function of diameter, or particle diameter. So um, I was told that in your next assignment, you'll be proving that uh, this S0 is 6 over D for spheres. So keep that in mind. <coughs> OK, so just taking a look at what we have overall so far. We've got our slurry at the top, and then it's flowing down through that first medium and coming out of the filtrate. We've got cake here, area is a cross-sectional area of the cake, and that's our cake thickness. So if we wanted to look at uh, the mass of the solids in the filter cake, we get, we start off with our volume, right? So cross-sectional area times cake thickness times the one minus porosity and times particle density. Okay, so that's the solid in the cake. If we look at the fluid that's in the cake, um, we, uh, we're assuming that some uh, liquid from the slurry is trapped in the cake, so it's a little bit moist, right? So we've got a little bit of solid, a little bit of liquid in the cake. So if we wanted to derive this equation, it's the volume, right, times voidage and the fluid density. Okay? And that's usually pretty small. Um, going back to this diagram, though, there are a couple of assumptions that uh, we're taking into account. So one of the assumptions is that uh, all solids are retained in this cake. So in the filtrate here, none of those solids are in there. And we're also assuming that there's a reduced volume between the slurry and the filtrate. So what was in the slurry, uh, that volume does not equal the volume of the filtrate, right? Because some of it is retained in the cake. And we're also lastly assuming that this is a batch process. Okay, so um, yeah, lastly, if we wanted to find the mass of the fluid in the filtrate, it's simply volume times the <coughs> density. Okay, and so after knowing all of those equations, we can get our slurry concentration. So here's our slurry concentration. Cs is the mass of the dry solids divided by the filtrate volume. Okay, which is that. And that top part here is uh, originated from that. Okay. So, now that we know those equations, we can do a calculation. So, this is a really simple calculation. Let's find the mass of the solid <coughs> cake for the given parameters. So, you get these calculators. And
So that's 
just to review, it's transfer rate over the transfer area. And that's also equal to the driving force divided by the <coughs> resistance. So if we apply this to our filtration equation, it, uh, it's in the same format too. So we've got our transfer rate dv over dt, and then over our transfer area, which is our cross-sectional area of the cake, right? And that's equal to our driving force, which is the pressure drop across the cake, and then our resistance, which is uh, our cake resistance right there. So we can uh, substitute that with RC, so RC resistance due to the cake, and that's what it is, and our units of one over meter. Uh, the cake resistance, we're going to go on to the filter medium and find the resistance of, uh, of the filter medium. So in a similar way, <coughs> we're going to do the same thing. So dv over dt divided by our cross-sectional area is equal to the pressure drop across the medium divided by the uh, resistance due to the medium and the viscosity. So that's our diagram that we're looking at here, right? So you've got the resistance due to cake and the resistance due to the medium. And your slurry is up and down. Okay. So just a couple of notes on uh, this Rm value. Um, it's an empirical value. So uh, for a given filter, you would need to do experiments to find this number. And also, when uh, we're looking at Rm, it takes into account all of the little and minor resistances in the system as well. So things like uh, flow going through the pipes, that's all taken into account with Rm. And then keep in mind that the flux through the filter cake is exactly the same as through the medium. So that's what I want. And then at the beginning of uh, your filtration startup, you have uh, RM as being really significant because your cake hasn't really quite built up yet, right? But after uh, letting it go for a while, you've got your cake built up, and so the RM actually becomes less significant, and sometimes you can neglect that value just because it's so small. So um, yeah, just remember that at startup or when you have a really short time, that you need to include uh, medium resistance. And if you have uh, a significant, like really large RM, then also include that. Okay. So now that we've finished talking about the medium resistance, we can put everything together to get our overall equation for the filtration system. So, uh, actually looking back at this diagram here, we know that the RC and the RM are set up in series. So from basic physics, we know that the total resistance is just the sum of those individual ones. So we have here uh, our total pressure drop, which is a total pressure drop through the cake and the medium, and then you've got the total resistance, which is Rm plus Rc. Okay, so this equation here, dv over dt over a is equal to this. This is our general filtration equation, and uh, just some terms here to reiterate what we just said. But, okay. So that's an important equation to take note of. Okay, so how do you think we're going to use this equation? Well, let's think about it for a second. If we, can we use it to determine the medium resistance? And what equation would we use? Any 
everything else and we can just solve for our end. Right. So what about at the beginning when you don't, um, <coughs> but how do you get RC if you want RM though? What kind of uh, actions would you do with the filtration unit? Okay. What if um, even even more simpler? So let's say let's what? do an experiment. So an experiment that yeah. I think you can to add just do a startup point R C. Right. Yeah. So. You can do that startup, but also <coughs> do an experiment without solids. So you don't even have K building up. Okay, so when you uh, have that case, you can just solve for RF because yeah, you don't have a K resistance. Okay, good. Uh, what about number two to determine the K resistance? Uh, 
What flow so You're given the pressure drop and you calculate the flow. And that's it. Okay. So that's your filtration model.